Okay folks, so in a few minutes I'm ready to get going and to start milling this log. And what I did this morning is I found a nice straight log on the pile, which was easy to get to, cut that off. I cut the log a little bit longer than what I needed because um, a log saw recommends you cut the ends of the log square so that when you fasten these boards, you're not, you're not fighting a crooked log. So I did that too. The cant hook I got, I picked up this cant hook for, uh, for cutting firewood, but it turns out it's pretty much the perfect tool for, for rolling logs when you're milling as well. And I also built this pair of log dogs, and boy, no regrets on the log dogs already. They, they're doing a great job holding the log in place. And I even used them when I was rolling the log on the ground to brace one end of the log so I could twist it. Now one tool I, I kind of wish I got, and I, I, went to, I was at Tractor Supply twice, folks, and I didn't pick it up, is there's a tool, it's like a J-hook, and then it's got a handle on it, so you can use that to kind of get under the log and spin it around. And I just, I, I didn't want to get it because it seemed like it might be, uh, well, I didn't want to put too much money into this project, but already I can say to have that J-hook you know, I could probably take a, a piece of rebar and, and make something very similar. That might work. Uh, you know, make something very similar, but that J-hook is really nice for spinning the log around. And, you know, this log is only about five and a half feet long. Not too bad, but, you know, when you get into bigger logs, you don't even want to push the limits of what your body can do. If you can find a way to use a tool or leverage to make it easier, I think that's the way to go. Uh, and the cool thing with these log dogs is also, you, you know, you just put them by the log and then you can just take the end of that cant hook and just give them a good ding to knock them in there. So, uh, so I guess we're pretty much set to go and I, I just was a little bit tired. I think I pushed a little too quick so I was sitting down for a few minutes. But let me zoom the camera in and I'll show you what, uh, what our plan of attack is for this log. This log again is 14 inches in diameter. And they recommend you work off of the pith, the center of the log here, for any measurements. And I guess, you know, the log is going to be bigger on the root end than it is at the top of the tree. So in theory, we want to start any measurements we're going to do on the root end and then work off the pith. Now, I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but right here, when this tree was cut, there's a bit of a divot. Uh, some broken wood, so there's there's no way that we can we can mill that. So my first cut is going to be basically to come through and, and kind of take that out. And I'm not sure if this is, you know, the way to do it. If you're cutting lumber, but this is the way we're going to do it. Today again is is more for experience than anything else. So the first cut I make is going to be right here to get rid of that. And then once we make our first cut, so we'll put this rail here and then use the big rail over there to level the, the mill, the, the rail. Once we make this first cut, we don't need to use these anymore. We can just rotate the log and then screw the rail over here. And then I'm not quite sure where yet, but then we'll, we'll square this one off. And then once we do that, we'll rotate the log one more time and then we'll square this one off. Again, not sure exactly where until we have a cant. And we'll have, so we'll have three sides square and we'll have a cant. Now this cant can be the width that we want our wood to be. If it's six inches, four inches, whatever, eight inches. And then we can just start slicing this cant to whatever size we want until we get to the end. Now the other thing is, is if for some reason one of these cuts on the outside is, um, is, is enough wood, you can actually make two cuts. So you can cut once to get rid of the bark and once or twice or however many times, and then you can make your own boards, you know, one by or two by lumber out here. It depends on the log. Now this is my first time, so I, you know, again, we'll see how it goes.
But this is the general theory. I, you know, I've been trying to figure this out, and we only need to use this rail the first time. So I'm going to see if I can hook up the rail, get the chainsaw going, lined up, and then uh, we'll see if we can mill some lumber. So folks, I did not get a milling chain to use with this chainsaw mill, and I'm pretty sure my chain is, is filed really well and optimally for cutting across logs, but not with the grain of logs. So I think what I might end up doing is, uh, you know, I'm going to go take some lunch, and uh, I'm going to get a new chain and see if I can file it at a 10 degree angle and uh, see if that makes a difference. I mean, it's, it's very aggressive, it's very grabby, and I think it's probably just a little bit too, uh, it's a little bit too sharp, for lack of a better term, for, um, you know, I got the 30 or 35 degree angle at it. So we're gonna do, uh, see if that makes a difference and see if we can make the chain a little bit, you know, keep it sharp, but less, less aggressive, and uh, see how that goes. Um, I guess it's working, but it's, uh, I don't like at all the way it's cutting. It's, it's too dangerous the way it's cutting right now. So let's, uh, let's go inside and, and we'll uh, see what we can do with that chain. Okay, so I went inside, I got some lunch, and then after lunch I came out and I found a brand new chain and I sharpened it at a 15 degree angle. And here's the, uh, here's the chain I used, and this is actually what's called a skip, a skip tooth chain. You see how there's two drive links between each cutter so there's less teeth on this one so hopefully that'll make a difference uh, with a smaller saw it'll hopefully need less power the angle I put on these teeth is 15 degrees the file holder I was using is by Oregon and if you take a look they have a guide for 15 there so that's that's what I went with I know I've seen the steel file holders have a um, they have a 10 degree angle, but then they use a different size file to sharpen than the Oregon chain, which is what I had. And what I use to sharpen my chain, you know, I could have put it on the saw, but I use this thing right here, which is called a chain meister. So I could just put this in my shop vise, and I'll put a link to the video. I made a video about this before, I'll put a link to that. But you can, you know, just take a regular guide bar, put it in the chain meister, put it in the vise, uh, you know, the bench vise, and it, it really did a great job you know, holding the chain without fighting the chainsaw to put a nice, a nice angle on it. And then this is the chain that I was using before, and uh, it looks pretty, I don't know, beat up after using, being used in the, uh, the chainsaw mill. But I did check the depth of my rakers, and my rakers are set fairly low because this chain is near the end. So usually I set my rakers lower when the chain's getting near the end. So, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and give her a second try. So we've got a completely different chain. I'm using a skip tooth chain. I'm using a 15 degree angle as opposed to the 25 degree angle I had. And my depth gauges are lower. So hopefully that'll make a difference because after that I really don't know, I don't really know what else I could do. So uh, let's fire up the saw and we'll, we'll give her another shot. That certainly made a difference, huh? 
Night and day, folks, night and day. Here's the part of the log I cut first. And I did, I did jam, I jammed a couple sticks in there the second time around to keep the kerf open. But then from about this point of the log over, I was using that chain which I had sharpened the right way with the skip chain and it's it's a much smoother log and it, it didn't buck me at all. And I, I'm almost tempted to run a non-skip chain through the saw, but I think for today we're just going to go ahead and, and work with our skip chain. You know, the saw, it definitely was lugging even with the skip chain, and I did also notice that with the skip chain it's a lot bumpier, you know, because you have left, less teeth, but it definitely did a, n a nice job. I mean, that's, that's more what we were looking for. So let's see if I can set this up for another cut, and, uh, and we'll take it from there. Worked our way around the log and our cant, and now we can just adjust this part of the timber jig. Let's see what it looks like at about an inch. So now that we've got the timber jig adjusted, we can just take it and lop off some wood here and make our boards. Now, <sighs> this is literally the first log I've cut. I haven't played with this thing at all before. You know, I've learned a lot already. So I just want to say if you're looking at purchasing a timber jig, you know, um, <sighs> it's a learning experience for me. And I'm sure I could edit the videos even I shot today and make it look like it was, you know, the easiest thing to use in the world. But I thought it might be a little bit more fun to kind of watch the, uh, the learning experience. And even as I'm looking at this log, I can see that this part of the log is kind of on this plane, but by the end of it, it's kind of tilting over. But, um, I mean, I'm certainly learning a lot about what's involved in, in making logs. Uh, I'm learning that it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> um, but I've also learned that if you have the right chain, and you, you know, you can get it done. Um, I think before I go ahead and, and take this next cut, I'm just going to kind of do my closing thoughts for this video because it's starting to get later in the day. Um, the first thing I want to say is make sure if you're going to do milling, you use a ripping chain. Uh, and by that, I mean a chain that's cut, the teeth are cut to 10 to 15 degrees. I know there's some specialized ripping chains, but I think it's going to be a lot better for you than if you use a, a standard chainsaw chain. The other thing I'm going to say is, you know, I've, I've heard on the internet that you should be using a saw, you know, a larger saw, and I agree completely. I'd much prefer to be using this chainsaw mill with an 066 or whichever, you know, I know Steel and Husqvarna make like, Husqvarna makes the 3120 and Steel makes the 080 or something like that, or 088. Those might be a little bit too big, but the next saw down from the top that's got good power to weight ratio, that's definitely the saw I'd like to be running. If I had one anyways, it would be a no-brainer, but I just, I don't know if I'm ever going to go buy a chainsaw just so I can cut a few planks. Uh, I'm certainly enjoying, you know, learning how this all works, though. Uh, I did notice, I, I sharpened my saw between when I filled it up, and if you want to sharpen on the job, or while you're milling, what you can do is um, put a 2x4 under the back of your saw, and that'll hold it nice and upright there, and it's very easy to, to get to the teeth. But I mean, that, that chain is definitely, uh, you know, I'll have to see what other settings I could mess with or what I could do, but 
you know, that chain is running hot. I mean, there's definitely, it's kind of blackened a bit, and this is not how you saw usually, you know, your chain usually looks when you're cutting, um, when you're just cutting, cutting lumber. But overall, I mean, um, it definitely does what it, it's supposed to do. And, and, uh, sorry, the kids are playing over there. Overall, it definitely does what it's supposed to do. I've seen the potential of it. I can definitely see where the big mill basic, the one, there's one you screw to the middle of the log, and then you can adjust some plates in the rail. I can see where that would definitely be a heck of a lot easier to do, uh, much more productive, and with the, with the Steel 066 or the, you know, the Husqvarna that's next down would definitely be a lot more, a lot more um, quicker and efficient, for lack of a better term. But so far, you know, I'm having fun. <sighs> Am I going to say, well, do you buy a chainsaw mill to try to beat the lumber yard for producing lumber? No. Would you buy a chainsaw mill because you got a fallen tree in the backyard? You want to kind of see what it's like? And, you know, you could definitely make you know, big timbers like this all day. And this might end up being what I do with it is, is to make cribbing, you know, cribbing to put like a piece of equipment on or something, you know. Um, but it was definitely, you know, I think I said in the last video, I, I've been having a lot of fun making this video. I'm still having fun. I'm still feeling good, pretty good about myself that I had a saw chain that wasn't cutting, so I sharpened another one a different way and it cuts. Uh, and along that line, you know, when you're feeding the saw, you don't want to push too hard. The first, the first cut or two I made, the saw was really bogging down. And you just want to push just a little bit and let the saw do all the work. And you'll notice the RPMs are higher. So that was another thing I've been learning. So, you know, overall, those are my, those are my thoughts of the day. I'm going to see if I can cut one more board so you guys can see me actually cut one board. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the most square board in the world. But... Um, you know, that's where we are, folks. And, uh, you know, it's a learning experience. Uh, this is also ash. If anybody was wondering, I'm cutting ash. This is not pine or something, and I'm pretty sure pine would cut a heck of a lot quicker. So maybe it's a testament to, to how, how strong my chainsaw is and I'm cutting a, you know, a hardwood. But uh, let's go ahead and fire up the saw. We'll see if we can cut one more, one more board. And I'll see if I can show you guys one board at the end of the day. Well, there you go, folks. I made a board, huh? How about that? Pretty cool, huh? And I gotta, I gotta say, it's a lot heavier when it's green, that's for sure. So right here, you guys are looking at, oh, it's six and a quarter by one, six and a quarter by one by, 58 inches, just the size I needed. Well, hey folks, thanks a lot for watching. You know, if you made it through the series, congratulations. You know, I don't wanna say, I'm afraid that this video is gonna make this timber jig look like a bad thing. And I really don't think it is. I think it just takes some time to get used to. But uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty thrilled that I, I cut a board from a log laying in my backyard out of ash. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know, here, let's see the grain there. A little knot action. A knot over there too. Very cool, you know, I can only, I can only get better from here. But uh, we made a board. Have a great night, folks.